cute! Ribbit, ribbit. Hello! My name's Kelly. I'm a third year zoology student at Aberystwyth University in the UK. I'm currently making these vlogs as part of a module that I'm doing called Communicating Research in which we um, learn about different ways in which we can get our research and our um, scientific ideas out there into the community with all you lovely people. I spoke to Ellie and she said that I would be able to contribute towards my blog, which this will be going on, um, in the form of vlogs, so hello! My topic that I've chosen to talk about for this module is climate change and behavioural ecology. So that's basically how climate change and uh, changes in weather patterns are affecting animals and how they behave. Climate change is actually a change in the statistical distribution of weather patterns for an extended period of time. So that can be anything between decades to millions of years. Climate change has happened before, we know it's happened before, so it is in some ways a natural process. However, it's not to get confused with global warming. Global warming is something we believe to be happening through greenhouse gas emissions. So in this instance, I'm, I'm going to completely separate global warming from climate change and talk about climate change as a relatively natural process in which we are not helping. Okay, climate change is known to have an effect on animal behaviour. We've already seen changes in migration patterns in birds, we've seen changes in uh, breeding seasons. We notice it very much when it comes to domesticated animals because we can keep a track of it. We've also noticed it in wild birds and um, even in other groups of animals. But what I mainly want to talk about is the effect that climate change is having on amphibians. So amphibians are already under threat from so, so many angles. What I'm going to be talking about in the vlogs and blogs to come is different papers and different opinions on uh, amphibians and how they're dealing with climate change, whether or not they are actually dealing with climate change and um, if there's anything that we can do to help them. So I looked at a recent paper that was published in 2014 by Loeb, Castley and Hero and they were looking at a particular species of frog called the Wallum sedge frog. What this paper was looking at was whether changes in the frog's natural breeding habitat led to changes in their behaviour. What was really, really amazing is that they found this particular species of frog would change when it would breed during the year to coincide with when the water on the wetland would last the longest, which is amazing because it basically means that they are adapting to these changes in weather patterns to, in order to ensure that their, their babies they have a much greater chance of survival. What they also found, which was just as amazing, is that the actual, the babies themselves, the time between when they were laid as a little baby egg and when they hatched was shorter. And then even more amazing, the time between when they were little, little tadpoles just swimming around and turning into adults was shorter. Uh, during those years where the wetland period, how, off, how much water there was was shorter. So they're, they're basically, adapting to keep up with the changes in their environment and this changed over a couple of years which goes to show that amphibians they can change Yay! so one of the main points of this paper was that yes amphibians can adapt to changes in their environment however one of the problems that i found with this paper in looking at it as a whole was that it only looked at the one particular species the problem with, uh, with me saying that amphibians can adapt, especially coming from this paper, is that this paper only looked at one species, which means that we, other than that particular species, we cannot say for definite whether or not amphibians will definitely adapt to changes in climate, if they will adapt their behaviour fast enough to be able to keep up with changes that are going on in their in their environment and in our environment so it's good news for the wallum sedge frog which is nice 
but the jury's still out on whether or not amphibians can keep up and in their race against time. So that's it for today. I will be back very shortly talking about another paper or another issue that's come up. Most of these blogs are probably just going to be me passing on my thoughts. Uh, they're just going to be supplementary to um, my written blogs. Let's leave it at that. See you next week. <laughs>